right into it. So welcome everybody and welcome back. Uh, great to have everyone on the session last week and it's really uh, impactful one when we get to look at uh, the concept of creating an enriched and connected family life. Uh, last week and for every week we'll be connecting through to the whole person paradigm. So that's body, heart, mind and spirit. Because we really are four-dimensional as human beings and the key is not to be they felt like a thing, rather to feel fulfilled. Now, within that, so one often we hear these words, then connecting our journey towards either understanding the words and then delivering upon them is where kind of life gets a little bit confusing at times. And so our intent here is that when we get together to connect with each other is to inspire each other with ways to do this and, most importantly, to take the action and, in fact, to grow. The whole person paradigm maps to these concepts of our four needs as people. One is to live, that's the body side, often referred to as a connection to the heart, to, to, the, to the physical body itself. Uh, to love, which is connected to the heart. This is the social and emotional side of our, our needs as human beings. And then the mind, which is to learn. So that's the growth and development from an intellectual perspective. And then from the, the centerpiece here, the spiritual side, is to leave a legacy. And this one's about meaning and contribution. And last week when we were together, we were asked the question, what do you want to live, an ordinary life or a remarkable life? And I had a resounding yes to the remarkable life from everyone. And that's really triggered us off on this journey now to understand what does it mean to create a remarkable life? And really there's three, uh, three core elements that, there's many, many elements, but three core elements that help us to deliver a remarkable life. One is to feel feeling heard and being useful. That's the contribution part. The next is to feel safe and secure. And the third area there is to, to have that feeling of progress, which is where we find the connection to happiness. And with this, there's three pillars that we focus on here. And these are the whole person paradigm. So understanding from body, heart, mind, and spirit, what it means. The enriched family life, because when we have this level of fulfillment, uh, we feel useful, we feel understood, we feel safe and secure within our family environment. And then the third pillar that we focus on is the ungettable get, which is taking you through to a level of progress. Now, for each of these, there's three key drivers. And last week when we came together, we looked at the driver of a purpose-guided family framework. So to actually get to that enriched family life, sounds great but what do we actually do to get there and we started to unpack that last week with the family vision word cloud now today we're going to take you to one level deeper which is traditions and rituals now this is where we go from uh, the feelings and the needs that we spoke about in the family vision word cloud and for many have gone through and done the exercise and started to uncover those the next then is to look at well if, if they're needs and feelings, what are the actions that we're going to take that will connect to those and really have everyone feeling fulfilled? And this comes down to the concept of traditions. And if you are in a, uh, if, if you're married in particular, you'll find this one incredibly useful as you bring together two sets of family traditions and blend them into your own new family tradition. No doubt you're doing that right now. Uh, the key then is to do it with more focus attention and being even more to the bit than before. Now, from a word cloud perspective, let's see, just in the chat, uh, if you've gone through and done this exercise, can you give me a one in the chat? So I can see just how many have gone through and done the word cloud exercise. If you've thought about it, but it didn't get done, give me a two. If you've thought about it, but it didn't quite get done yet. All right, cool, so we've got a few in there. All right, well, we're going to trigger that off today. So we're going to extend the exercise until Thursday, which we mentioned for those that were in the town hall a moment ago. We do have a couple that have been submitted through. So here's Rob and Rob and Rob's family, the Brambles. I love how you got your name in there. And uh, Rob, can you share a little bit of uh, uh, story behind the tree for us? Uh, so I sat down with uh, my daughter and my wife and uh, we just went through the exercise talked about our feelings, talked about which words we would really uh, like to have. So um, you can see an artist there. My daughter's an artist. So we wanted to add that to the tree. 
I Thank love you. It. I love it, mate. Thank you for sharing. And what's really beautiful is, Rob, I can see that you and your family have gone beyond the exercise, which is wonderful. It means it's really connecting. Now, the exercise gives you uh, the template with a list of words, uh, feelings, as well as needs you can go through. And yet there's no reason to stop there. It's kind of like your primer to get you started. And by the way, welcome, George. We've got George from the Community Co here. Welcome, brother. So so grateful to have you here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the invite. I'm loving what I'm hearing, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's awesome. Uh, and then Kemp, uh, Kemp Israel also shared his. And I'll have a look at this. You want to talk about being deliberate and commitment. This is already framed. How awesome is that? Well done, Kemp. Can, can I get a, a couple of emojis? Yeah, wows. They're the right responses as well. In, in the chat for, for this great work that's happening already. So thank you for inspiring us both, Rob and Kent, with your contribution so far. Now, uh, right, so complete the, the family word cloud. So here's the exercise from last week. We will make sure that these instructions come out to you. Uh, now, I also had a little, little faux pas, which I'll talk straight and uh, confront reality and uh, create some transparency on. Last week, I said uh, that... Uh, uh, so the intent was that the, the day off is for the uh, internal team, but I did mention it in this session. So if you are not an internal team member, uh, however, you are at the Exceed Institute, uh, we will fund that day off if you get this done. But we do need to clarify it with your client first to make sure that's approved. Uh, now, but you do need to be here today and needs to be submitted by Thursday, the 30th of September. That's this Thursday. The instructions are complete the family word cloud, post an image with your, uh, with your family and your output. Happy snap online and tag remarkable life. We are go the A that should say <laughs> and global office team. And then uh, access your grab food panda meal voucher to have a meal with your family um, that you live with. So, and then complete the family vision word cloud activity, which we've got the links to and take those photos and share them with cloud. Uh, and with that, our gift to you is one paid day leave. We, we believe so deeply that when you get that harmony at home, doesn't it make such an importance and, and impact at work as well? I don't know if you've ever been there where you've had a challenging time at home and you get to work and your mind is just so consumed with everything that's happening at home. So uh, I think we've all been there. So the idea then is to, to be very deliberate in our actions at home and very purposeful. And, you know, as, as human beings, we really struggle with ambiguity and, and things are not going right. And so we really need something to anchor on. And if you can find something that's bigger than just yourself and your own needs, and align it to what the overall family needs are together, then you've got something to bring everyone back to when times are tricky, challenging, or not as expected. So you can remember why we're here as a family and what it is that we're setting out to achieve. Now we're taking that one little or one layer deeper now with the concept of traditions and rituals today. And you've heard me say this word deliberate a few times already, haven't you? Now, what is this word to be deliberate? Uh, done consciously and intentionally. This means that we're actually using our conscious mind to make the choice and put the energy and effort and focus into getting the outcome that we desire. Now, this beautiful thing that happens with our minds is that the more deliberate we are, the more conscious we are in taking those actions, we're actually building those neural pathways to a point where these things start to seep into our subconscious mind and we start to do them as a matter of habit rather than a behavior that we're actually needing to put the energy into. Think about this in any area of life. Once you get to a level of mastery or you've built habits around it, things come really naturally and it doesn't take effort. Whereas at first, any of these exercises that we're doing are going to feel weird, different, uncomfortable because you will be challenged to grow and do something that's outside of your comfort zone. Into that feeling, knowing that you're about to learn something new and something great will come out of it. As you often hear us say, brave, resilient, remarkable. Well, that's about taking that deliberate action towards something that may not feel comfortable. That's the bravery part, you do it anyway. And then if you don't get it right the first time, which we don't, because that's part of learning, keep going at it, that's resilience. And then the net outcome of this is always something remarkable. Even if it wasn't what you expected at first, it comes through the learnings of just the application of it. Now, the next word we're looking at today 
<laughs> so we're all set up. It'll be uncomfortable until it's nature. You've got to uh, do it anyway. Keep going, Michelle. So it's fantastic. The uh, word tradition. Now, uh, the tradition here as definition states, the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation or the fact of being passed on in this way. Now, in theology, to say a doctrine believed to have divine authority, though not in the scriptures. Now, this one, even when I, I read these words out loud, I actually feel really tingle through my body because this is, this is more powerful than most of us will even realise, this concept of tradition that we can set forth in our families, a way of doing things. And I'll, I'll give you an example of this one. Uh, and, and Benson's just shared that sacred tradition. Now, this is the part where the connection of, of what we can achieve from an intergenerational perspective when we're deliberate is way more powerful than any of us may have even realised. In fact, the study now of epigenetics, I don't know if you've been looking into epigenetics lately. I normally push you with neuroscience, but we're going to another layer today, epigenetics, is the study of how your behaviours and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes actually work. Now think about, we've all seen that the, the DNA uh, before, haven't we, where, where this is essentially what makes up the human being and it's what, what tells our cells to, to divide and turn from a single cell into like heart muscle or, or perhaps a, a neurons in your brain. Like it's just mind blowing, like the, complexity of the human body and the fact that we're even standing here today and able to communicate with each other, let alone over video chat. All of it's mind blowing to me. But there's this really interesting uh, studies around epigenetics and, and one of the examples in research is where uh, mice were trained around a particular smell to avoid it. Now, that, that uh, activity to, to train yourself around something, uh, essentially what can occur is like, Proteins can be wrapped around sections of the, the DNA and basically turn on and off switches within it. And in this example here, it's to say, oh, I don't like that smell. Now, interestingly, the, what the studies found is that with uh, intergenerational, so the, the, the mice were bred again. And so the next generation, uh, with no exposure previously to any particular training, actually found that this particular smell that the previous generation was trained to avoid, these mice would avoid as well. And so epigenetics is starting to, to share with us that actually it's like memory gets passed through the DNA. And although it's not a change in the DNA, it's the change the way the DNA, is, DNA sequence is actually read. Now think about how powerful this becomes. And, and to this previous uh, statement here, a doctrine believed that to have divine, divine authority though not in the scriptures, think about how powerful this is and you know, being passed from one generation to the next and the next. And uh, therefore, uh, and, and this other wonderful thing is that to be deliberate means conscious choice. That means we are in control and you do have a, a decision and choice to do this. It then begs the question, what are your family traditions and what are the ones that you will choose to pass on from generation to generation? And so the growth activity for this week is around these two little brainstorm areas. The first one is to list the family traditions you have experienced over the years. And the second one is to list the family traditions that you would like to deliberately create as part of your shared future with your family. Now, to kind of get the ball rolling on this one, let's do a bit of a brainstorm session together. And just for number one, I'd love to hear from you. Think of a family tradition or ritual or activity that you do or have done in the past with your family that has held some meaning or impact for you. Just in the chat, type it in. It can be one word, it can be two words, whatever stands out for you, whatever comes to mind. Share the eating together. Oh, wonderful. Mummy time, in a sense. Excellent. Christmas dinner. I mean, wow, I'm going to need to try and keep up with this. <laughs> Let's get them excited. Uh, Mummy time. Beach out in Raymond said, Christmas dinner, Jason. V said, Mum and Dad took us to Christmas each year on international travel. So many learnings. It's so true. George says, family dinner several times a week. Rob says, daily prayers at dinner time. The connection. Cherry, praying 
the rosary together. Thank you. Joanne, gathering on New Year's Day, the whole family clan. Wonderful. Gabby's saying going to the theatre for the movie release. It's beautiful. Cherry says attending church as a family. Donna Lee, holiday time over Christmas and New Year's Eve. Nathan, gathering from on Sundays. Josephus, visit parents in the province together. Jason, roasted chicken wings on New Year's Eve. Like, I, I love hearing uh, little items too that could be so simple and easily replicated. And isn't it powerful how getting together around a meal just has such a, a great way to, to connect to everyone? Uh, and it's often one of those areas where talking really starts to begin. But then it says, when we get older, whenever there is an issue, we make an unleavable family meeting and discuss and resolve the issue. Unleavable, you're not allowed to discuss it right. We discuss values and say sorry to practice humility since we're all boys. Beautiful, Benson. You are going to, I think, really enjoy next week's session where we're going to look at um, the family totem and the family totem talking stick is a new new concept. We're going to bring, bring these concepts together. Uh, and, and it comes down to that unbelievable meeting part when there's a challenge, listening to each other, feeling heard and feeling valued and understood. Uh, Finn said, going home to the province, Aline, sending postcards to relatives. Wow, that's a, that's a long lost activity, isn't it? Sending postcards or anything in the mail. Uh, wonderful team. Great work. Okay, so the challenge I set forth to you now is to do this activity with your family. So, and in particular, it's uh, list the family traditions you would like to deliberately create as part of your shared future. And this comes more powerful, though, if you start with one and then move on to two. And the reason for that is, especially if you're in a, a family unit where it's um, husband and wife as a really important part here because you've got two different cultures that are being merged together and often there's traditions that come from both of those and it's easy to spark challenges in the family unit because you've both got different traditions there was just ways it was always done and I remember a classic story shared by Kerwin Ray who's a, an Australian uh, inspirational speaker and Kerwin shares a story around uh, how there was a, a, a roast that was cooked on, on Sundays and uh, in this family. And, and the mother would always cut the top and the tail off, like cut both ends off. And they were starting to, it was questioned by the husband, why did you cut the, the both ends off it? And she's like, I don't know, mum always did it that way. And she said, like, well, let's call your, your, call your mother and find out. And they called the, the mother and asked, you know, why do you cut the ends off? And she's like, oh, I, I don't know. Your, your, grand, your grandmother always did it that way. And, they're fortunate to be able to call the grandmother and the grandmother said, well, of course I cut the ends off it. Our ovens were so small, the roast wouldn't fit in. <laughs> and it was a funny moment of like, there's a tradition that had been passed on, but it didn't have any meaning later on to it. And so uh, it's okay to question our traditions to see if they've got meaning and adds value. You don't want to have to take everything as a, as well. oh, we've always done it that way, so we, we just do it now. We know that doesn't work in business, and the same thing is in family life as well, is to look at some things. I mean, you might decide to follow that family tradition and cook it off as a way to reflect on the story of, uh, you know, how things have changed. However, uh, when you've got these family traditions, ask what value do they add, especially to the family, you know, that you're designing for the future. Remember that you're the designers, you're the coders of your life, and as a family unit, getting that alignment together becomes so, so important. Uh, now, with this then, what do you do with it? Well, consider taking your family word cloud and then adding your traditions under those and then make it do what Kent has done and grab a frame, put it up on the wall and be deliberate about that. Call it out, herald that and say, this is what we're doing together. Now, uh, then hold yourselves accountable. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous uh, town hall, like a we, we often hear this concept, a, a, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. And really, a, a goal without a deadline, but without accountability is still just a dream as well. And so to hold 
the, the family accountable around this is to actually write it down, put it up on the wall, somewhere that we can all see it on a regular basis and then deliver upon it. Then what happens is that if you've, you've ever got change and uncertainty, which we know that will happen in life, is that you've got something that you can stick to. You've got something that you can anchor on and feel confident knowing that even with all the ambiguity and the change that goes on in the world, you can rely on the family unit to deliver upon these items. Just watch how that enriches the family life. So thank you, everybody, for today. Our intent is always to keep these nice and short, 20 minutes if possible. We're on the 20-minute mark today, <laughs> which is rare for me. Uh, so if you've got any questions or thoughts, do please put them in the chat, and then I'm sure we will have our photo time as well. And thank you, George, for being here. I'm so grateful that you joined us today. Uh, my absolute pleasure, mate. It's uh, it, so much to take from in 20 minutes. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm writing furiously down. I've missed five things. I'm like, okay, I'm taking screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right. Photo time. So what we do, George, yeah. is take a photo with a heart symbol, and we also click the heart emoji at the same time. And then we, so we, but I'll let Jim start later. Jim start later. My apologies. I was talking earlier, but I didn't realize I was on double mute. 